Thank you for being with us this morning. It, this is Off the Press, the newspaper review where we take a look at our national dailies and try to make sense of it. I have a very interesting uh, reviewer who will be with me, joining me uh, virtually. The very fierce Aisha Yesufu will be with us and speaking from Scotland. Good morning, Aisha. Good morning and thank you for having me, Amaka. Thank you for being on the show this morning. Did you hear me saying the very fierce Aisha Yesufu? <laughs> I heard I was like, you know, my man is to hear that like, which face I die because I'm. Just <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, I've read up, you know, there's one of the things you said um, that you will keep fighting for Nigeria. You never give up on Nigeria. It is a good thing yeah. uh, to say. Thank you very much. So let's launch Thank into <laughs> the papers. We have several papers uh, today, this morning. Uh, we have the nation, we have the punch, but we'll begin with the punch newspaper already displayed there. And headlines, experts back Buhari as president faults ECOWAS single currency on page 26. Killer soldiers uh, deliver Deliberately gunned down IRT policeman to free Wadme, Hamisus Kisman says. That story is on page 7. Now, fear grows as hospitals release COVID-19 test results in two weeks. Uh, that story is also on page 2. Lagos to turn around time for coronavirus result has, uh, Lagos says turnaround time for coronavirus result has improved. That's according to the commissioner. All right. We also have the figures, as you can see, globally, we are at, uh, at 9.3 globally. And Nigeria has passed the 21,000 mark. We are now at 21,371 confirmed cases in Nigeria. We have recorded 533 deaths so far. And uh, we have discharged 7,338 in Nigeria. That's the COVID update. Now to the big story. More drama as police occupy APC office. The National Working Committee battles Geodom over uh, neck. That story is on page two. I have Buhari's approval to convene a neck meeting. That's according to the suspended secretary. You are on suspension and can't convene neck or National Working Committee once embattled Chief Tain. Now I have decided to sit and watch development as they unfold, says Amechi. Interesting, interesting conversation going on there. And if you scroll up a bit on that same paper, uh, we have some picture story. Welcome to APC National Headquarters. Well, that, okay, that's about that. Policemen at the entrance of the National Secretariat of the All Progressive Congress in Abuja on Tuesday. More drama. Uh, we also have picture stories to that. Court suspends the motion of 75 coronet obas appointed by Amosu on page 9. And protesters storm EFCC office, demand Obasa's probe. That's in Lagos on page 8. And Akari Dolu plans to remove me illegally, deputy governor alleges on page 16. Now, demolition reps fault Onyema and urge re re retaliation against Ghana. That has to do with the Nigerian High Commission that was demolished in Ghana. Meanwhile, the president has received a letter, according to Garba Shehu, to apologize. Is that enough? We'll come into that very soon. The story is on page 9. Generator fumes kill uh, two hairdressers in Lagos. Oh, that's sad. The story is on pages four and five. Keep safe, everyone, please. Let's do the needful. May God rest them. And finally, Oyo postpones school reopening to July the 6th on page 11. Let me hand over now to Aisha Yesufu. Aisha, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Now, you have heard all the stories. Uh, so many of them sound quite disturbing. As a passionate uh, person and a patriot, Aisha, which one is catching your, uh, your attention? Where do we begin this morning? I think uh, we are going to start from uh, leadership, right. uh, the crisis uh, with APC, because they say leadership uh, is everything, and Nigeria is absolutely suffering because of lack of leadership in Nigeria. I mean, earlier on, you said something about what I had said, and I just want to put the whole full quote. For me, I said, I will never give up on Nigeria, no matter what Nigeria throws at me, because I'm going to fight for the unborn generation coming to Nigeria the way I wished others, other generation before me had fought for me before I was even born. So for me, this is what it is about. I want to live in Nigeria better 
than I met it for the generation that it's coming. So more, no matter the crisis being thrown at us, I will stand there. And I hope many Nigerians will take this on. And I always say, Nigeria must, must work in our lifetime. Forget about people who say, oh, it can't work in our life. It must. Mm. By the grace of God, we must make it work. <laughs> Having said that, I'm going to come to the crisis happening in APC. I mean, it's, it, it's, it, yeah, it's a party crisis, but this is a party in government. This is a party in charge of the country. So we have a president who cannot manage crisis in his family, who cannot manage crisis in Aston Villa, who cannot manage crisis in his state, who cannot manage crisis in his party, and who cannot also not manage crisis in Nigeria. And that's absolutely not acceptable. That is affecting every one of us. Many of us do not understand the fact that governance affects every aspect of our lives. So we abdicate our responsibilities to God. We say, oh God, we, we pray to God and we go and sleep. But here we have to put eye on governance. What is happening? And right now, the leadership crisis in APP, in, it, it's affecting, it, it will affect the whole nation. It's already affecting the whole nation. And we need to do something about it, honestly. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I mean, you have raised very valid points there, Aisha. Let's, let's move away from the crisis that is rocking APC and take a look at other matters in that uh, newspaper, in the Punch newspaper. It will be displayed again for our audience uh, to see the headlines there. Um, I don't Aisha, killer soldiers yeah. deliberately gunned down IRT policeman to free word me. Uh, and this is according to Hamisu, uh, Hamisu's kinsman. Now, where are we going with this kind of situation where even those who are supposed to be protecting us, uh, you know, everyone seems to be unsafe, for lack of a better word. What's going on? So, we, 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 you see, we still come back to that leadership crisis. We have a commander-in-chief who is not in charge. I know a lot of people say that, oh, why, why do you always talk about Buhari? Why do He's the head of state. Everything comes down there. Mm -hmm. We have a commander-in-chief who is not in charge. Who is not uh, 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 who is not given the right kind of leadership that the nation needs, and so we have people. There's something they call the law of the league, where the person that is at top, you can't go beyond his capacity, and that's what we find ourselves today. Otherwise, the IG, and we have an IG, uh, IG of police who is just there like a mere decoration. For crying out that policemen have been killed temporarily in Nigeria, yet you do not see the IG of police being outrage, being angry that people can kill police. Mm -hmm. I mean, in every other part of the country, when you touch a policeman, you know the whole the whole police force comes at you. But in Nigeria, they kill a policeman, and it's just as if nothing, you understand? And I'm like, if they can kill a policeman and they don't feel outrage, what will happen when they kill when they kill the rest of us? They won't feel that outrage. And so and, uh, another thing also is the fact that criminals are taking over the country. They are becoming more emboldened. They feel that nothing is being done to them. They are daring and daring and tearing us. And instead of us to have a commander in chief who is going to be out there coming out, standing and you know being at the front, at front, uh, at front line, fighting for the security of this nation, ensuring we are all safe, he's busy in front of his mirror, very different uh, kaftan and taking pictures. Hmm. Sadly, sad. Uh, Aisha, I mean, let's move away from politics a bit and talk about what is a problem for the whole world, COVID-19. Uh, we, yeah. Yeah, we have a story there that says fear grows as hospitals release COVID-19 test results in two weeks. Uh, we also know that Nigeria is now at 21,000 plus and globally 9.3. I mean, you are away, and I'm sure you're following. I, I, I would say, yeah, certainly that you are following the events that are unfolding in Nigeria. There's been a lot of conversation about mistrust in terms of communication about COVID-19. It seems we're not sure whether we know so much or it's a question of being in denial. How do you see the management of the COVID-19 crisis in Nigeria in comparison with you know, other folks and other countries, even African countries, if you like? Yes, so so uh, so Amaka, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I'm, I won't be able to effectively answer that question. Okay. Because of the fact that uh, from April, around April 23rd, when Ramadan started, I went off social media, I went off news, I went off everything. That I normally do that in the month of Ramadan, and after that, I didn't come back. Mm. And so, whatever I'm saying might not be factual. But I'm going to get just give an overview of what I knew before I went off, and I'm going to come back into that issue and that mm -hmm. uh, because I needed to just Amen. work. Uh, I'm a business woman, which a lot of people get. <laughs> and in this country, you all know if you don't have 
the financial independence, mm. you will not have the money to be able to speak the way you want to. And so, and, and you know, with the COVID-19, it has affected e economy globally. I mean, there's an economic downturn. It's a new world, and everybody has to strategize their business. And so that's what I've been doing for, for a while. Mm. I have to say that, I, I, I'm going to say that uh, one of the things that we have, there is a mistrust, of course, and we should sadly, uh, it comes to uh, where there's no accountability and transparency from the government, so the people don't trust the government. I speak to quite a number, like last week I was speaking to an old friend of mine, a right from a childhood friend, and he was like, oh, there's nothing like COVID. He's in Kano, you understand, Kano. Mm. And he was like, oh, there's nothing like COVID-19. The government just wants to happen. I'm like, no. He's, I bet people are dying all over the world. And he was like, yes, all over the world, but here we ha in Nigeria we have heat. We wow. have uh, been hit through this virus. So you see there's this huge mistrust, and that's a huge problem. And one of the things also that is a big uh, huge problem, like, talk about denial. Nigeria seems to think we have a pretend to prayers. Oh, it's not my portion. It shall like to not happen to me. Jesus name it's not happen to me. Hello. The people <laughs> that it's happening for, they have God too. Mm -hmm. But they are being active because God will not do for us what he has given us capacity to do for ourselves. So don't think that, oh, you're going to go and pray and nothing will happen. But you know, one of the most distressing things that I've seen with this is the fact that resort is coming out in two weeks. Mm. I thought you had something that you could have resort within, within days, few days. I remember I remember before I went on, I had done on my program, I talked about when I looked at the case of South Korea and how they were, they were they even have drive through testing now. I see you're driving to, you get tested and you move away. Because that was how South Korea was able to manage uh, effectively uh, the whole, uh, 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 their own COVID-19 crisis. And so two weeks for results to come out, I mean, that's too slow. That's that's really not good enough. And then we have a lot of people where people are going about doing their things. I saw, uh, like, for example, in Edo State, when uh, my own governor, I'm from Edo State, I a lot of people seem not to do that, uh, uh, the governor of my state of, uh, of origin uh, was going off, went to what was defective. And in an open place, people were mingling. I'm like, don't they know that there's COVID-19 in town? I mean, there's so much. But from the leadership, from the leaders, from the from the uh, citizens, there seems to be, uh, how do I put it now, the normal Nigerian, I don't care attitude about this. Mm. And it, it, it might affect us on the long term. It is affected us already, Aisha, if I may say. Um, let's move on to another paper. Thank you so very much for all of that. Let's go to the Nation uh, newspaper. It would be displayed right now. Thank you. Already uh, displayed. Heavy rain to pound Lagos in July, September, and October. Government cautions residents. It's good that we're getting this information right in good time. That story is on page two. Oyo government shifts schools resumption. Uh, three billion naira spent in fighting the virus. On page six, three billion naira spent. All right, rumble in Odo Assembly, Ondo Assembly over Deputy Governor. Ajay's aide fired. That's on page six. Now, for the Nation newspaper, we have the Akufo Ado begs Nigeria over demolition. Woman, uh, well, you, you read that for yourself. Let's go to the big story. WK attacks PDP National Working Committee, uh, Working Council or Committee, okay, over Obaseki's ticket bid. And the Rivers Governor, some NWC members are tax collectors. All right, Port Harcourt, Echo Marcotts give conflicting rulings. PDP reports judge to CJN. INEC warns parties on suits. All right, Undo Doctors begin strike in the midst of COVID-19. Emo, 13 Emo lawmakers test positive. Uh, Nairamani's concert mall unsealed. Uh, the ex house, ex HOS lots health workers. Uguanyi grants relief to taxpayers. These and more on pages six and of course inside the newspaper. Giadom not competent to call neck meeting, says APC on page five. Uh, what party's constitution says? Now, court stops uh, ex-NWC member. And again, the figures, COVID-19 figures, they are staring at you and I. Ndume to stand shorty for Meina in money laundering trial. Okay, that story is on page three. Let me now hand over again to Aisha. Aisha, we are now, at, uh, we are now looking at the Nation newspaper. And I'm sure so many things are popping out at you. Yes. Okay. Uh, one of the things that I would take for me that is popular is the, about the heavy rains. Mm. I mean, every year we get 
these warnings about heavy rains coming, the rains come, they damage properties, they, and yet Lots. we do nothing. Okay. Mm. What kind of a people are we? You're supposed to see a problem and then you tackle it, you solve it. Don't, 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 don't think that it won't happen to you. I mean, we need to hold our government accountable. We need to be accountable to our citizens. We need to do the right thing. We need to say, this is what we're doing, that it's not working. Stop drugging mm. the waterways and all of that. I mean, every one of us should be responsible and should begin to act as a nation to take Nigeria away from where it is. There are certain things. Yeah, we understand heavy rains because of the global warming and climate change and all of that. Different things are happening. But in our own case, we are not even doing anything to mitigate the situation. Mm. And, and that is quite sad. Uh, also on the issue of Undume, you know, starting short for, you know, for Mena, it, it's, just, it's, just so, it's just so sad. You know, when it comes to... Nigerians are united when it has to do with corruption and all of that. I mean, wow. all every all there's no tribe, there's no gender, there's no region, there's no religion. They are just one united people, and they do their own thing there. But then, when it comes to fighting for good governance, when it comes to standing for Nigeria, we find ourselves we are all divided uh, based on, on, on different things, and and it's it's really sad when you have that's that's a lawmaker uh, who is supposed to be making law, who is supposed to be. They're fighting for Nigeria defender, actually standing as shorty for somebody who has been accused of, uh, you know, of such heinous corruption, pension money, you know, money from people who had suffered, who had given their all to this country, people who, who we saw old people dying on the streets every day on the queue. Some of them have died on the queue. Yet to have a lawmaker who we boldly, knowing fully well that there's no... Uh, there's no repercussion for what he's going to do. There's no, nothing is going to happen to him so he can go there and stand. In countries where they have their acts together, that kind of person shouldn't be uh, a lawmaker. Yes, then, of, of course, coming to the issue of uh, uh, deputy, I think that was deputy governor, right, mm -hmm. uh, on those days? Yeah, on those I, I've not followed the drama as much, but I do know that what he has uh, gone back to uh, PDP, mm -hmm. you know, APC, and then putting, bringing in the weekend, uh, talking about the, the National Working Committee, hmm. I don't know, NWT, anyway. Listen. And uh, so it's, it's all about, you don't see this politics of a thing. They, they, just, they just move fluidly from APC to PDP. That tells you they are the same people. If they change name, they do their thing. I see some people, you see some people, and then I saw somebody uh, on social, uh, I, I saw someone uh, who was like, there was a picture I saw sent to me, and then he had changed his profile to, uh, to overtake his own. This person was an APDP member. Mm. Uh, so all of a sudden, because Obaseki is now in PDP, everything is okay. He's no longer that uh, sort of like enemy in, in court. Yeah. And so tomorrow, if Buhari is to defend the PDP, all the people that you see shouting to them say, oh, government should do this. Some of them would be like, oh, it's okay now in PDP. I mean, it is time for us as citizens to actually wake up if we need this, the right thing to do. And all of this using our head to do uh, ping pong, ping pong, we need to have it stop. <laughs> Aisha, I mean, essentially, I, I hear you, there's so, many, so much conversation around double standard, around our leadership system, you know, around being proactive as a nation. I'm struggling so hard to find just one uh, good, one positive story on the headlines, and I'm not able to find one. But we'll move on again very quickly now to Guardian and see what the Guardian newspaper is got for us. And we'll do that very quickly because we are also running out of time. The Guardian newspaper says, Danger signals from Edo political actors, we, all right, Northern Governor Mungudo and others meet overrising insecurity. Uh, group clarifies petition to UN, Trump, uh, over invasion of Southeast, and airlines seek flight resumption as NCAA submits findings today. Nigeria may lose out on COVID vaccine. Uh, that's according to the minister. Minister and others task government and science on homegrown solutions. You know, we've had this conversation severally. Tensions as police seal and reopen APC sectariat. The drama continues. Picture stories, picture stories of traffic, of movement, Lagos and life seem to have returned to normal in Nigeria in spite of COVID-19. Lastly, Aisha, what are your thoughts? The previous paper, we, uh, there was, there's a conversation about opening of schools, reopening of schools. Uh, the Oyo, Oyo state governor had said, well, he's going to open uh, the school and there were lots of conversation and it's been moved to July. Do you think Life should continue, really. Should we open our schools yet? 
Uh, for me, I, I don't think we should open our schools yet. Not at all. It's a no, 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 no. Because we have kids who don't even understand. We have our children who who are going to mingle, who are probably, this. if this virus gets to schools and kids are carrying it around, some of them are going to be asymptomatic. They will not going to show anything and then pass it on to their uh, older parents or something. And we might have crisis. We have actually have kids, uh, you know, dying from this COVID-19. We don't have what it takes to be able to manage a crisis, even as it is. So I think for me, we should keep school off and then look at different ways, innovative ways to be able to teach. It's going to be very hard, especially when you think about uh, the uh, those uh, in the public schools where, you know, most people don't have internet, we can't do online teaching with them. Private schools, they are not going to suffer as much, but public schools are going to suffer. And that's why I always say the greatest injustice in Nigeria is that access to good quality education is dependent on the economic status of one's family. And that's a crime because everybody everybody should be able to have access to internet, should be able to have, to have online classes and everything. But it's not. If they're even going to open schools, maybe the higher institutions, and then they will be able to, you know, have a... Uh, both do both online and offline. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, here here in, uh, in in Scotland, uh, because uh, uh, my two kids school in uh, in the UK, one is in uh, England in London school in London, the other one here in Aberdeen, and that's the person I'm going actually with. Because she mm -hmm. started before she was 18, mm -hmm. so I just stayed over here to be with her for a while. Mm -hmm. And they, their school, for example, my son's university, which is a private university in London, they are not going to do on they are going to do online to January. So oh, that's what they already sent the circular out. Yeah, and then my daughter, they're going to do online. 70% is going to be online. Only practitioners and tutorials are going to be in, in on campus. And they're going to, you know, space it. So in that way, you'll be able to mitigate. Mm -hmm. But when you have kids just coming over, uh, it, it won't be that well. Okay. And that takes me back to the next thing, uh, Amaka, in, on the issue of COVID-19 vaccine. Mm -hmm. And you know where the minister said we might lose that on home ground as special. For example, I'm a microbiologist. Uh, I, I, I'm a microbiologist. I have a master's in pharmaceutical microbiology. I started my PhD in 2007, had issues with my with my uh, supervisor, and I got angry and I, I, I didn't finish my PhD. But guess what? There's no work for me, but I'm a trader today. I'm a market woman. I buy and sell because there's no work. We come out. So most of people don't understand their epidemiology, the world of epidemiologists microbiologists, virologists, and all of that, you find them in banks working, you find them doing all sorts of things. And today, this is where we are needed, but the nation hasn't done, hasn't built the capacity for, mm -hmm. for, the, for the money that was spent on us to get that education to be able to put it to use. And it's going to affect Nigeria. So there's so many things that we need to put yeah. together. All these research centers that countries spend their money on, we need to spend money on all of those things. And we have more jobs for people. We create a lot of things. And there won't be enough money for people to steal and, and use uh, the way mm. they want to. So I'd like you to speak. Maybe I'm speaking too much. Like, <laughs> Thank you. Speak. And our time is up, really. <laughs> Thank you so very much, Aisha Yesufu. She is the co-convener of Bring Back Our Girls. And now we also know that she's also a microbiologist, among other things. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Stay safe out there, Aisha. Thank you so much. Right. I mean, I had a really great time. So thank you. Good. Catching up, girl talk. <laughs> Good, we'll bring you Thank again. You. All right, that's how we wrap it on Off the Press uh, today. The time is always 8.30 from Monday to Friday here on Plus TV Africa. My name is Amaka Okoye. Please keep staying safe out there.